what I'm most proud of is that we have completed EPUB 3 and it's well on the way to being adopted. It was a major upgrade um, bringing the Ocean World forward all the way to HTML5 and the rest of the modern browser stack. And now we have good support for EPUB 3 from iBooks, from Kobo, from Google Playbooks, from Sony, and from others. But we still have a lot of work to do. So I'm proud that we've made good strides in advancing the digital publishing world, but we as yet still have a lot more work to do to get it fully adopted. Well, to me, it's, it's very exciting to have collaborative open source development of more than two dozen companies coming together to create implementation technology around the EPUB standard. In the case of the web technologies, Apache, the open source implementation of web server software, was critical to the advancement of the web. Later, we had open source software uh, from Mozilla that became Firefox, uh, WebKit that's the basis of Google Chrome and Apple Safari browsers. And so I think when, when even competitors can come together to collaborate to develop open source, it's a healthy sign because a standard isn't just a specification. What really makes a standard implemented are three things, a specification, shared implementations, and market forces that, that push people to, to uh, become compatible. And with this medium foundation, we're seeing both the collaboration on the shared development and the market forces that are causing even competitors, people like Texture, Aldico, Bluefire, and Sony coming together to collaborate, which is, I think, again, a good sign for creating a fully interoperable open ecosystem for publications based on open web platforms. In the EPUB 2 ecosystem, Adobe had a common implementation that was widely used by various people called the Reader Mobile SDK or RM SDK. And that, that had associated DRM technology called Adobe Content Server 4, ACS 4. So Adobe recently announced that they're joining the Reading Foundation and they're going to make the ACS 4 client side code available as part of the Reading SDK project. So that's a very positive sign because ACS 4 DRM is the most widely used digital rights management technology for ebooks, it's going to be available as an integrated part of this Reading SDK. Adobe is contributing to the open source effort. Um, again, it's a case of the evolution of the market. Instead of one vendor um, creating their own implementation, as was the case in EPUB 2, now with EPUB 3, they're part of this broader collaboration. Right. Well, I think if, if we let any one commercial co company control what is the definition of a digital book and lock it to their proprietary platform, then I think shame on the publishing industry. I think books and, and publications deserve to not be tied to one vendor's platform. Consumers deserve freedom of choice to read where and how they want to, and publishers need to be able to distribute their content through many different channels. That requires an open platform, it requires interoperability. It's not about a standard for its own sake, it's about interoperability that leads to a healthy ecosystem. So Amazon, like any other platform vendor, will do as much to lock their platform up as they are allowed to get away with. That's just natural. It's not because they're evil, it's because they're capitalists and the market forces reward them for creating what's called lock-in. Lock-in means you have switching costs. You know, once, once you're in, it's harder to get out. It means you have network effects that, that make your platform more valuable over time. And it means that you have barriers to entry by your competitors. That's what a closed platform delivers to a vendor. And Amazon has many platforms. It's not just about ebooks for Amazon. They have an e-commerce platform. They have a cloud computing platform. Now they have a tablet hardware platform. And they're selling digital music and digital video as well as digital books. So all of those Amazon platforms play together in their aspirations. And they're tying them together in interesting ways, for example, to promote it so that the Amazon Instant Video only works on an Amazon tablet. This kind of tying is, again, natural for a platform vendor to do to promote their proprietary objectives. But with regard to books, I think it's very important for the industry not to let Amazon or any other vendor win in those platform games to the extent that books become locked up in their silo and inaccessible to people on non-Amazon devices, inaccessible to people who don't choose to buy from the Amazon store. We think that digital books should be available universally, they should be universally accessible, and they need to be in a healthy ecosystem where the authors and the publishers get a fair price. Because ultimately, as a reader, I want amazing content. 
Of course I want it cheaper. Why not? If I can get it cheaper, that's great. But at the end of the day, the authors and the publishers who make those brilliant books that inspire me have to get paid or they won't keep writing. And I'm afraid that the ecosystem dominated by one vendor will not be healthy. It's like a, a field of soybean crops that used to be a jungle. The jungle was very healthy, diverse ecosystem. And once you have the field of soybean crops, pretty soon you have a dust bowl that can't grow anything. It's not healthy. I don't think we need to let Amazon or anyone else create that uh, unhealthy monoculture by having a platform that they lock consumers into and that they can control when and how publishers and authors can access.